Hey everyone, it's Laundry, y'all. Welcome Tuesday night, Scotch on the Bayou. I'm back. <laughs> Thanks for the patience, everyone, for the last minute cancellation of last week, but we're back tonight talking about Buna, Buna Haben, Buna Haben, the a jewel among all those on Isla. So um uh, I appreciate so much y'all being here, hanging with me. Last, I've been under the weather, not feeling really great, but on the mend and um, ready for some whiskey because I haven't had any in a little bit of while. <laughs> and I'm ready to, to enjoy tonight talking about one of my favorite distilleries, one of our favorite, um, spoiler alert, uh, experiences that we had on our trip last year. And that was the warehouse number nine tour at Buna Haben. Um, so let's see who all is in um, and doing well and hope everybody good. Hey, Rob's in, has already got the Buna 12 going. Uh, cast strength, not only, not only 12, but the 12 cast strength, which is just, mwah. ah, chef's kiss. Awesome. Great to see you, Rob. Take care. Thanks for being here. Trooper's in. Is he on a rig? Is he somewhere? Uh, getting ready to have some bonus. So that means he's on dry land. <laughs> yes, we have really bad weather coming in um, to the deep south tomorrow. I think Texas is getting hammered now. So um, our time will be in the morning. So hopefully I'll, it'll pass and it won't be too bad, Trooper. Um, <laughs> just don't want... Just, I would like... I, I would like no major weather events for 2024, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you probably will understand what I mean. Um, Mark JG's in my bud, and I got to see him a couple weeks ago. It was awesome to see him in um, in uh, Waco with Charlie McLean in the SMWS tasting panel. That was very cool. Hey, friend. Thanks for checking on me, too. I appreciate it. So, yeah, glad you're not offshore, Trooper. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, Loch Ness is in. Hey, hope everybody's doing well and had a great day. Yeah, it was a good day. It was a good day. First day I've been back in the office, actually. So it was a good day. Um, yeah, so we're having a really, a really good time. Um, and this other Mark, all the Marks are in. My Mark, Mark, JG, and Mark Broda. Hey, friend. I got, I got me a Scotch for Dummies glass working with your coin, of course. <laughs> as well on top. I hope you're doing well. Miss your friend. I need to catch up. Um, yeah, you need to, you need to start pouring something. That's for sure. Martin's in. Hey, Slodgy, y'all. Uh, no boonie, boona for you. I, I would imagine. You, yeah. So you're working tonight. Gotcha. Hey, Jim's in. Hey, friend. Good to see you. Thanks for being in. Mike Melissa, Molasses, thank you very much. Good to see you in, folks, and all the peoples. <clears throat> so yeah, tonight, um, we're going to talk about what we would have talked about last week. Um, but Boone Hobbin, I've gone through most all of our tastings that we had on our big epic three week trip last year. Um, and basically I'm soaking it all in living again vicariously through all of those things. And, um, you know, I, I think I, I pretty much saved one of my favorites for last. And, um, and that's just because I've always wanted uh, to know more about Bunaha and more about, you know, once I figured out what whiskey was and learned, you know, more about Isla. The ironic part about this is <laughs> it took my third trip to Isla to finally get to Bunaha. That first trip, I didn't know anything. I was just passing through, right, to get to Jura and stopped at Lagavul. I mean, I stopped at Lafroig. The second one was for the Academy. And so we had a very regimented schedule, which didn't include Buna. This past, um, so the last week in March was Isla Whiskey Academy's spring um, uh, session, and they did have a tasting at Buna, and I was so happy about that because I think Buna is a must-see. Um, whether or not you are totally infatuated with their whiskey, if you're in Isla, Buna is a must-see because of just seeing it, um, just being able to see the geography of where it is, how old it is, um, that is just hanging. Like there were at some point, there was no road there. And when you drive there, you will see why there was no road there. And everything came by ship, you know, and, and you're looking over the paps of Jura, you know, you're just like practically spitting distance from it. 
and it's absolutely breathtaking. And um, for no other reason, whiskey aside, Jura, I mean, rather, Bunahaven is a must see when you go to Isla. Just absolutely, for sure, for sure. Um, so, yeah, so the third time it took me to get there. <laughs> Um, and I really, really, really wanted to do the warehouse nine. Like I'd always heard of all the tours, warehouse number nine was it. <clears throat> and I'd heard about this one particular guy who ran that, but we were going on a Saturday and, you know, like I would imagine like most everything, you know, your top ringer people are not going to be working on the weekends. And, and I was like, okay, it's fine. You know, if, if I don't get the legend, David Brody, that's okay. I'll understand. For some reason, I think a friend of ours in Glasgow made a phone call. <laughs> I don't know. I may be totally wrong. I wouldn't put it past him. Kind of tall guy, you know, kind of grayish hair, likes to do quizzes at the end of his show. Yeah, I think, I think maybe a phone call was made or something because on a Saturday, the legend himself, David Brody, did our warehouse tour. Um, and I was, I was absolutely taken aback. Um, not only that, but we got to also visit with this couple from Germany, um, Marcus and Maria, who we had seen at Glen Scotia before. And, um, also I'm trying to think, Mark, there was one other one. There's three different ones that we, um, Oh, at Spring Bank. Duh. Yeah, I did the bottle to barley with them at Spring Bank. So um, got to be friends with them, too. I mean, when you go on these tours, you kind of pick up with some of the same people in, in a particular region, you know. And it was so good to meet them and talk to them and all of their ideas. And she was really the one of the two, like me, that was really into whiskey. And so Buna was a very special place for her as well. Um, so, yeah, I want to. I just, I, I, I do get excited about it for sure. Um, Ben's in, hey, pour, pouring, here's another point about Bunahaben. You're pouring the peated teotonic, I, 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 say, I can't, absolutely impossible names in Gaelic. I love them. I love them to death, but I can't, I can't do the names. I, I really wish it came with like a phonetic, um, pronunciation up under like in italics the word person in me just wants tell me what it is and i'll write it out phonetically for all us mere mortals because i can't i can't pronounce them for sure that's it you know and 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 this guy i'm getting to see this guy in a couple of weeks excited about that dustin the buna 25 of course you are um i'll do anything to make you have to drink a buna 25 for sure Absolutely. Thanks for being here, my friend. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. And super stoked to get to see you soon. Yeah, absolutely. So tonight, even on antibiotics, <laughs> don't tell my doctor, um, I'm going to have a wee bit, just a wee bit of five, one, two, three, four, five, five count them drams that we were served during the warehouse number nine tasting. Um, and we'll pop in some tidbits about Boonhaven as I, as I go through. But let me know if you've um, been able to go over there, if you've been to Boona, if you've been able to, to do the tour. Um, I would say right now, let me put this in the chat. Um, if you are an Instagram person and you would like some, some, some life thrown into your day from time to time, go and follow <laughs> David J. Brody. Um, make sure I did that with my glasses on. Hang on. Yeah. On um on Instagram. Because he will lighten your day. You may be having a really rough day, and then all of a sudden your feed comes up and you hear this guy goes, Hello! Greetings from Isla. And then he just shows you the most gorgeous like landscape and he'll show you the view from the veranda of Bunahaven. And you're just like, oh, okay, there is goodness in the world. I can trudge through my day a little bit more because he is just that awesome of a guy. Um, and he absolutely adores whiskey. He adores 
Boonahaven and Isla in Scotland, and you feed off of that when you're you're around them. So whether or not you can actually be there or you just get through osmosis on Instagram, um, you can you can too experience David Brody. Um, so yeah, we talked a couple of folks in here. I've got um, the 12 going, 12 cast strength, the core range. Um, Boonahaven the 18 is just amazing. Um, and so we've got, and I've got one, I think I got this at Specs. Um, pretty sure I did. It was a 2008 Manzanilla cask matured. And this one was a 12 year old one at 52.3 from Warehouse 9. Ah! Um, so yeah, I've, I've, I've had a Manzanilla and I absolutely adore Manzanillas. So our first is a Manzanilla. So this is our first sample here. And it's like, oh, that's nice. A manzanilla. Was it in bourbon first? Mm -hmm. So let me, before I get into that, what I've done. So when I went on tour, I had a sheet for every distillery. And I broke it up into quadrants of like the who, what, where, when, that kind of thing, distillery notes in one, the spirit characteristics and any questions and a shot list or something like that would do. And then we'd fold it like this. So I would be able to, you know, write things that I needed to while I was doing that. Let's just say that by the time I get to the fifth dram at the warehouse tour, I can't read my writing anymore. <laughs> it's, I was going through all of my notes and all of my tasting notes. So what I'm doing is I'm actually going to write down my tasting notes as I taste tonight. And then I'm going to go back and see what I can legibly read and compare from what I had when we were there at the warehouse. So we'll do that. Um, saw a couple of other folks pop in here. I wanted to say hey to um, Trooper says he has some different bottles of Boon Haben. Only tried a couple, the peated one and the Boon 18. Still haven't opened. Um, yeah, you haven't opened that one yet. Eight, the 18. Crack that sucker open, bud. Um, yeah, cool. Hey, Graham. Graham's in. Um, bit dodgy phone signal. Uh, I'm guessing you're on um, the train back from some glorious tasting in Glasgow, more than likely. It's not Wednesday, so it's not Glasgow Whiskey Club, right? I'm starting to learn your schedule, Graham. I'm not stalking, I promise. I'm just like living vicariously, right? Um, Martin, you get it. Amazing, amazing tour. Maybe the favorite one you've had. Yeah, just first class all the way. Truly, truly a good, a good thing. Mark, my Mark was, I think, really, really impressed with it. So we'll go through this first dram is Manzanilla. So, oh, we, yeah. Um, full maturation of 17 years. This is a 2006, 17 years only in a Manzanilla cask, not a bourbon cask first, and then Manzanilla, just all a Manzanilla sherry. Oh, man. And it's, it's like, um, it's like shortbread and almost, I want to say dreamsicle, but it's not, it's not really orangey. It's more like a lemon verbena, something like that. But, but, but the shortbread part gets the maltiness of it. And I think if I remember correctly, and if I can read my notes correctly, the only one of the five that's peated is the very last one. Um, all of them are unpeated. Mm. See there. So, so Graham, would you like to to give us some phonetic pronunciation of <laughs> of Buna Havens? <laughs> And, and, you know, I'd never misspell Buna Haben because, like, as a word person, I'm like, Buna Hab Hain is the way I remember it in my head. But phonetically, some of some of the, mm, I just can't. 
I try to I try to remember which CHs are Ks and which are Chs, and I never get it right. I mean, to me, manzanilla finishes are pretty bright. And this one is too. Very creamy. Um, a little, little salt there. Um, the sweetness is more of a, like a honey lemon. Yeah. It's a little grassy. Hmm. <laughs> He'll try. Give it the old good try. Oh, a whiskey day off. Mm. Yeah, you've you've been you've had some really fun, vac and that's another one. If y'all don't, if you don't uh, follow Graham, he's he just hit. Okay, let's all right. Everybody raise glass because if we all lived in Scotland, <laughs> it would be really great to be able to go to a bunch of distilleries, right? So I'm going to brag on Graham here for a bit. Graham is a great friend and a complete contributor to the chat. He's always telling us great things about stuff that we don't know about. And we certainly don't have access to over here in the States, a lot of it, but he is a student of whiskey and he is constantly adding to his whiskey book library. And he's constantly wanting to learn more about process and about researching old um, distilleries that are closed. I think you've documented the ones in Campbelltown even. Um, we talked about when <laughs> Jennifer was here two weeks ago, we talked about um, Glen Tesco, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing and fun aside. But I would like you all to raise a dram and say a, 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 a true here here to Graham having visited his 100th, 100th distillery, very like in the last week or so. Big deal. So congratulations. We all live vicariously through you because it's in your backyard and because you have such a great appreciation, Graham, for all of that in the process and all the people that make whiskey. So thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and cheers to you. Um, and go knock out the rest of the, what, 3550 that's out there. That's amazing. Truly amazing. Mm. 17 years Manzanilla, 58.6, drinks about like a 46. That's really, really dangerous. So, nose, he had shortbread, malt, lemon verbena, salty lemon honey, a little grassy. Hey, look at that. I love validation. <laughs> I can actually, I can actually read this. So, my my notes from last June were lemon, grass, um, one thing I can't read, oily and salty. So I'm call I'm calling that good. Um, yay, awesome. So that's the manzanilla. Uh, oh man, that nose keeps getting better and better. So I'm gonna throw a little water on it real quick. And like I said, y'all, I'm having a few sips of each one of these on account of other chemicals going through my body right now. <laughs> oh, okay. We've got some, some phonetic stuff going on. Woohoo. Um, yeah. So Graham, when you get finished with all the ones in Scotland, you got to come over here to the States. <laughs> so you only have, only have 50 more. Get it the full stat. Yeah. And then we'll get you over here. Well, I mean, just think about how many you can knock out in Kentucky alone. I mean, I can, I can take you to five here in Louisiana within an hour. So, you know, there's that. Um, so, uh, da -da -da -da. so Martin says that, okay. Um, Kyo Binok, Kyo Binok, Kyo, Kai, K, Kai, Kyo Binok. I'll go with that. Smoky mist. Yes. That's it. Cool. Um, <laughs> Rob says he's 95 ahead of me. It doesn't matter how many you get to. It doesn't matter if you ever get to one. That's the point of, of like shows like this and being able to share an experience with it, you know? Okay. So 
I'm getting to this next one. Boone Haven, 15 ton mash ton. Um, six wooden organ pound washbacks. So you get that kind of waxy, you know, just, I don't know. Wooden washbacks are just amazing. Um, the, the stills, there's a pair of stills and they are like this bulbous onion kind of shape. Um, slightly descending line arms, very dark patina. This is not a, oh, we're going to put the shine on kind of, um, real pretty, you know, the, I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous with the dark patina, but they aren't gleaming copper icons, you know, like good morning or something like that. What I found interesting that, um, David shared with us was like 15 years ago, they were pretty much 80% bourbon and 20% sherry in their maturation of casks. Um, heavy, heavy, heavy bourbon casks. Um, and now they've flipped that. So they're 80% maturing in sherry casks now with about 20% bourbon. So that is interesting when you start thinking about what they're, how they're going to start rolling some of that out what effect that's going to have on a 12 and 18 on their core range, even. I think that's pretty interesting to, the, to see. Um, so, yeah, that's that that I thought was interesting as how that they would maintain that core range um, and the taste of it. Because, I mean, they're, they're heavily, they're on the, the sherry side anyway. Um, but you've got to have a really good sherry cast program to be able to maintain that and especially flip it at and that big of a deal and at 60 percent of what you're doing to sherry okay so the next dram and i'm gonna i'm gonna try to hold these up as we go so this was the manzanilla this slightly darker mm -hmm. this is red wine this is rw is a french barrique bordeaux and it is 14 years. And let me see if I found the ABV. I don't think I have the ABV on this one. I don't. Boo hiss. No ABV on this one. Um, but 2009. And it smells like grape juice. Almost like bubblegum grape juice. Grape juice. Yeah, kind of, kind of whiny, but hmm. Do y'all find Buna's particularly oily? Not like a log of Moulin, probably. I think they're a little bit lighter than that. Oh, Graham's gonna go break out into Ireland. I can see that. Okay, if that other one was 58, 6. This, this one, I think, was popping around 60. Oh, wow. Just got a burst of, like, an orange liqueur. Like, almost like a Quantra. <laughs> um, that's crazy. French Bariques are weird for me. And even, Graham, do you remember the one that we had at Deanston? A sister distillery by the way um that one was an oddball for me and especially if they do like an str with a barrique it's just mm, there's something usually off-putting at that for me but this is uh, very sweet on the front end like i said it was like that orange liqueur a little brown sugar. It's very dry on the end. You could totally get the red wine tannins from the dryness at the end. And it's a little, a little spicier, not much spicier than that first one, but more like a white pepper. White pepper spice. Let me see what I wrote, if I can read it. I don't have any notes for that one. Wait. Dang it. No, so I try not to look ahead of time, but I didn't have any notes for that one. 
throw a little bit of water on this one too because it's it's a little hotter than that other one was for sure. Um, so that first one, Manzanilla, for 17 years. This 14 years in a French Bordeaux. So full maturation on that. And one of the things, yeah, because I mean, everybody knows this is, whiskey is my thing. Mark tolerates a lot, <laughs> a lot. But he was really getting into listening to David. And David's walking, he's walking around with the stave and he's talking about, you know, like how, how the oak pulls in and it, it, like the maturation process and everything. And, and if you know David or if you, you've watched him on, on Instagram, um, if you really to see his passion about explaining things, um, my Mark had a big light bulb moment. Um, when David was talking about maturation and he, and he said, you know, you'll go to some of these tours and people will say, oh, and you know, we go through and we have the mash and then we go through and then, you know, with fermentation, which oddly enough, I thought for as sweet as it is, their fermentation is only like 52, 54 hours, um, which I thought was kind of crazy. Um, but he's like, you go through all of that, you know, when we, we make the whiskey and then we put it in a cask and it goes to sleep until we decide to bottle it. And I mean, he pulled that to a, a complete stop and he goes, I can't stand it when people say that the cask goes to sleep, that it just goes to sleep in the cask. That isn't what happens. If anything, it's working. That's where the work happens. That's where the ebb and the flow and the temperature, you know, back and forth and the work is in the cask. And, and I think, I mean, I was like, oh, wow, that's a great way of putting it. Cause I've heard that same thing from people. Oh, we put it sleep in the cask. And here's David, like really talking about how important the cask is, which for enthusiasts, we know that, but he's making the point that that's where the work happens. And my mark was like, Oh man, it makes so much more sense now for someone who's, you know, interested in whiskey, but not to our weird level like us all the time. And, and I, I loved his perspective and being able to, to get people to understand what happens and what the process is. It's not just all in the still. It's not just all in fermentation. It's not all in just the maltings. It's being able to really get it into a vessel that's going to add character to it, not by sleeping, but by actually getting stuff done. So. Mm. Fun facts about warehouse number nine. It used to be where they did their floor maltings. Of course, they don't know anymore because of capacity. They make 3.5 million liters, I think a year. So, wow, that was really good. I, that tastes better than I remembered it. Because I'm usually kind of on the fence about a red wine barrique. But that one was lovely. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so the Deanston release does release a lot of red wine finishes and become a bit of a signature style. That 2008 Red Bordeaux. Man. I could find a case of that. I'd be right. <laughs> I think we went to two bottles of that, but yeah, even the ones when we went to the tour, there were some really high dollar, you know, red wine ones um, for sure. Oh, good, good, good. Um, and I want to catch this one too. That you're talking about the Manzanilla. Sherry's only matured on the coast of San Luc uh, San Lucar de um, Barmida. Mar Mar Araminda. This is Spanish, I know. I can do Spanish. Uh, hence the salty profile. Duh. Okay. See, I love it when that happens. Um, I love it. So, so Mark says he has the two. You still have a 2008 Bordeaux, Mark JG? What? What? I can't even. I can't believe that. Okay. Third dram, y'all. <laughs> third dram. Um, let's see. Yeah, that um, that 2008, oh, it was so good. The 12 year Oloroso. Mm. Yeah. Yum. Yum. 
That sounds delightful. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. Um, the whiskey has so much to give after working so hard year after year, right? Right. You would think it would be tired and just kind of flat, but it isn't. It's just like bursting, ready to get in a bottle to sit on your table, to go in your glass. You know, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, I absolutely love it. Yay. Hey, that's in. Hey, um, when you went to the warehouse and right, Mr. Oh, he was on vacation, but still, I'm sure it was quite lovely. All the folks are there are very lovely. And isn't it gorgeous sitting out on the veranda and looking out over the water? Um, you know, I think a lot of folks, when they tore down one of the warehouses to build a new visitor center, some folks were kind of a little salty about that, but it was also a way to be able to, to offer people more of an experience when they do get to Buna. That's for sure. Um, yeah, make sure you check out Matt's um, channel, Whiskey on the West Coast. Um, he's just so pleasant and it's so nice. To, he has like this radio voice. <laughs> he's a YouTube voice. Um, so yeah, third ram, third ram, third ram, one, two, three, third ram is, I'm excited about this one. So this one is 14 years old <clears throat> and it had double maturation. First, and I don't know how long it each, I don't, I don't think that was in the notes because when I, I went back through my notes, I wrote things down that I knew that I could remember. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, sometimes they'll have like everything broken down. You can just take the picture of it. That, that was not the case. He just went over and started finding casks. So that's what we did. This one is a sherry refill was the first maturation and then an amarone was next this is 60.1 abv 14 years old from 2009 and it's there's um almost a clothy kind of um note to it still still with the malt And red fruit. And I, I feel like I should know more about Amarone. <laughs> um, oh, man. Just very malty as well. Just super, super malty on this one. So here, here's the Amarone one in... Mm -hmm up against the, the red. This is the red wine. This is the Amarone. I'm trying to do this where it will. Mm. Yep. Red wine. Amarone. Sixty point one is most definitely there. It's it's a bit hot, coming in hot and sour, which I get off on amarones, don't you? Um, mm -mm -mm. look at that. We have a new member, Mr. B.R. Scott. I believe that would be one, Mr. Kevin Collins. Hello, friend. Is that you? <laughs> Hey, a new camp drummer. And I know um, we had another one, Rick Johnson, um, joined lately. And I appreciate all the camp drummers. Woohoo! Mm. Kind of get the little, I, I get some of the malt, I get more of the malt on the nose than the taste. Definitely dryness, the sourness at the end. Not, not as sour to me as a Sauternes. is. Yeah, here, it's me. <laughs> I knew that was you. Thank you, friend. It's just such a generous soul, that one. You never you never know what happens when B.R. Scott shows up at your house and says, Hey, you home? I'm going to drive by. Okay. It's like all kinds of fun things come out of the box in, in bottles. <clears throat> Mm. 
that's much drier and more savory. There's this, uh, there's a hint of sweet on the front end, but man, it goes straight into, um, into this kind of, um, savory, sour, dry, tannin kind of thing. Might need, that one might need to sit out some more and with some more water. I think that one definitely would need to do that. Mm. Please, folks, always helps. Always, always. Uh, I appreciate it very much. So one of the fun things is, <laughs> um, is that tonight, actually, we're celebrating three years of Scotch on the Bayou. Can y'all believe that? Can y'all actually believe that? This little channel um, that started with Instagram the, the night before I went to go see four guys in a basement in Avon, Indiana, <laughs> before a Scotch for Dummy show, um, that started from that and has gone through all of, all of the things to start a YouTube channel three years ago, mainly because of those four guys and that one we talked about over in Scotland, um, who's, this is his coin, um, for our fourth dram. Yeah. Three, three years. That's kind of crazy. Um, could not be here still without all of y'all, um, with all of my friends, especially with Mark and supporting me the way he does. My brother, I just saw him pop in. Ethan, that does all my graphics and is um, another one. Of the, they're my two biggest cheerleaders. <laughs> um, you know, to, to say, okay, it's go ahead. You've got a voice in, in the space, you know, um, of course, people want to tune in on a Tuesday night and watch a middle-aged woman from Louisiana talk about scotch. What else is there to do, right? No, but this is this is really pretty cool, guys. So thanks for coming in and hanging with me um, and, and living vicariously back through all of these drams that we had at Buna. Yeah. <laughs> and I know what you mean because I do it all the time, but... Happy nice SOB anniversary. <laughs> I absolutely understand. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate it. I really do. And and thanks. I really appreciate it. It's just, just then these guys. Oh my gosh, between you and Zach, Mark, um, y'all are always, always there too. And the camp drummers have been so, so absolutely wonderful. And you know, that support helps buy gear. And I've got, you know, um some time we're gonna take off during the summer, but big plans, reworking the studio, um, all kinds of things we've got working up, uh, for, for the fall, for sure. It's going to be a really a big deal. I'm excited about that. Thanks, Graham. I appreciate it very, very much. So fourth dram, we'll get through these. This one, code MS, much lighter. Ooh, look at that. So this was the Amarone and this was the red wine. This one, that this was the um, Manzanilla. This one, yes, we've got some bourbon now, right? Definitely got some bourbon matured in this. So this was also a double maturation of um, bourbon for nine years. And then for seven more it was in a Muscatel cask. It's 53%. 16 years total, 2007. So you think about a bourbon maturation, a Muscatel. Muscatel is so sweet. A dessert wine is super, 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 super sweet. How's that going to pair with their desolate and their, you know, all of those things. The nice bourbon, nine, solid nine years in a bourbon um, cask. Oh, wow. So it's, you've got this underlying vanilla and then this really pungent sweet. Almost like cotton candy, like berry, like berry cotton candy, like berries as in like um, blueberries or blackberry, raspberries, raspberries but sweet, like, 
confection sugar. Mm, 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 mm. Let's see. Hey, Ian's in. Slanja friend, thanks for being in. Um, you still to open your Boona 2021 face shield um, to open later. Uh, that would be a great anniversary dram for sure. Um, yeah, face shield, they just released the tickets, I think, today for the the 31st of May with all the things they've got going on that day. Um, oh, man, that's so sweet. Uh, thank you. That's, that's awesome. And and I did catch your, your, your comment about your voice. And if I could hear your sheriff voice, I'm not I'm wondering if that is what you're, <laughs> that's how you pay for whiskey. <laughs> Knock on the door and say, police. <laughs> Um, but if that is the case, thank you very much. And please be very careful because we like having you around. Um, mm, 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 mm. Ben, no worries. <sighs> Start that sweet. This is almost... Um, it's a very different texture than the others. It's a little oily. Um, Three-dimensional kind of. You get a little bit of the vanilla. And then it's not near as sweet on the palate as I thought it would be. Mm. Martin, you go do your God-given talent and... Bring somebody in the world. Your special soul to bring those souls in. Thanks for being here when you can, friend. I appreciate all the support. And God bless that new one coming into the world. Um, goodness. It goes from, so, kind of slightly oily vanilla. A sweetness to it that doesn't linger real long. But goes into a really kind of punchy spice what is it spice it's not a ginger um what is it it's not the white pepper either it's not a cinnamon what is that <clears throat> well, it's like a cardamom or something and dryness there's just definitely a dryness on this one um which you know for a sweet Wine, there's over wine 53 percent. This drink's hotter than 53, definitely. It's 16 years, it's just very, I don't want to say mellow because it's that kind of sprightly in the end, but man, alive. But the bourbon really is predominant in that. I think the Moscatel just kind of gives it an edge of sweetness and kind of rounds out the edges and the oakiness that there's more, there is more oaky taste to that than the other ones. And this one's 16. So we've had a 17, a 14, a 14. Yeah. 17, 14, 14. And this is the 16. So that one, that one, I definitely got more of kind of the vanilla oakiness off of that. So for sure. Mm. Very nice. Very thoughts on the age sweet spot for Bunahaven whiskey bottlings. You'd say the 18 is it. It's hard. Like the 12, like an everyday dram, that 12 is really just the regular 12 is really hard to pass up the cast strength is like an extra from that. Um, but yeah, that 18 is just so <laughs> it's very tasty. It's so very tasty. Ugh. Um, man, it's so good. Yeah. But I'd like to hear what y'all think about that too. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, let's see who else is, um, well, thanks Ben. Appreciate it. Um, 
and t-shirt delivery. So the t-shirts are through Teespring, um, but we can find out. Like, let's look and see what the shipping would be to you through that portal. Don't buy it. And then we'll see what just sending something via to Australia would be. Um, yeah, they, they are a lot of fun. The, the Scotch on the Bayou shirts are a lot of fun. We have the Slodgy All Scotch on the Bayou and a Camp Dram shirt. So that's a lot of fun. But yeah, you know, like email me and we'll figure something out for sure. Um, celebrating the three years. Woohoo! You found the uh, single malts of Scotland, Boone Hobbin 18. Wow. That's a great thing to celebrate. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's very cool. You have to tell us what you think about it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to see if I have lost the shield. Uh, hmm. Yeah, not too many. Like I said, towards the end, I was just totally enraptured with David and I wasn't writing much. And what I was writing was kind of scribble at this point. Um, so number five. Number five would be, this is our pita dram. None of those had peat. Absolutely. Those first four, there wasn't a peat near to it. This is our fifth dram. Oh, look at the color. Oh, look at the color. Of course, non-chill filter, no color added, yada, yada. All the things. Mm. This one was in a sherry refill for nine years nine years and refill sherry cask mm, i want to say it was in a hoggy yep hogshead for nine years then but wait there's second maturation for 10 years that's right it's 19 year old from 2000 i don't know something <laughs> oh man pete yeah woof and put the lid back on that 10 years in an Oloroso, fresh Oloroso cask. 40 ppm on the malt. 53.9%. Now we get in some Buna with some boom. Some boom, boom, Buna. <laughs> uh, with some, with some, with some peat up in here. <laughs> I know. Don't make me drink peated Boone Hobbin alone, Rob. <laughs> that just would not be proper. <laughs> well, what if I'm an understanding gentleman you are on that? Hey, everyone. Ahoy to you, too. Hope you're doing well, friend. We're drinking Boona. I know you got a couple. Oh, goodness. I mean, right at first, you just, you get a waft of the peat and it's earth. It's it's not iodine. It's not medicinal. It is it's like earth. Not quite peat moss, but but earthy. With more like a fireplace, like an like an old fireplace smoke. Not a campfire smoke, not open air kind of smoke, but like an old fireplace where the charcoal's like all burnt down and it's just the white part. That you just kind of tap with the the the, the poker <laughs> and just kind of and little sparks go off. That is the smoke that you get off of this with this underlying sweet red fruit. Oh man. I hope this tastes as good as I'm remembering it smells. <laughs> it's just so good. Uh, you know really do and, and people don't think you know like the 12 has just got a scooch right it's just got a scooch of peat in it um i would i would even i would say it's probably contact <laughs> contact peat <laughs> not purposeful peat um uh, is that a thing like can you get can you get a peat of whiskey by contact peat instead of <laughs> purposely peating it I think I've coined a new phrase, y'all, in the industry. Contact peat. It's contact peated. It wasn't meant to be peated. It just stayed around peat too long and absorbed it. <laughs> um, so you haven't had a uh, not had a peated Buddha, huh? 
Huh. Um. Oh yeah. So it was that. Oh, the Castor Boone and last time you were in. Uh, that's the score and a half. That's what Rob started out with tonight. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, Moine is, is easy to pronounce for you Southerners. Is it Moine? Is Moine money? <laughs> what are you talking about, Willis? You're so funny. Oh, y'all. I'm kind of afraid to get to the, the taste because it smells so good. Mm. <laughs> oh, good gravy. That's good. <laughs> oh, y'all. And for some reason, I, I think... I did flip out over this because I came home with two of these, two of this particular one. I think, I think Mr. Brody was being overly generous and making sure that Leanne went home with her fave drown or something. Oh man. I, I would say it's a sherry bomb, but it's not super, super sweet. It's more like a, um, it's so balanced. And y'all, y'all know that's kind of my thing. Uh, I mean, I love a sherry dram, but if the sherry overpowers the whiskey so much that you lose the characteristic of the whiskey or you lose like that balance of, of smoky and sweet and, uh, and, and the, the peat in it, again, the, the peat on the flavor of this on the palate is an underlying earthiness or savoriness. Um, The sweet red fruits are there and they kind of linger in the aftertaste. Blackberries, plums, raisins. But the savoriness I'm getting is the nuttiness. That's the Oloroso for sure. Absolutely for sure. But it has like this base and it's probably that nine years in the refill sherry to where it's not so over the top. Um, but the, there's a slight acridness with the smoke that completely coats your mouth. Like the, the peat and the smoke completely coat and counterbalance the sweet of the sherry. Like, damn. <laughs> this is really good. Oh, man. Mm. I'm going to have a wee, a wee drop of water on this one, too, with what I have left in here. Dang antibiotics. Ah! Well, they are working, so I'm very happy of that. I'm not I'm feeling so much better thanks to modern medicine. <laughs> there. Mm. Water didn't do it a whole lot of favors, but didn't hurt it a whole lot either. Mm. That is amazing. Yeah, you know, that manzanilla is we went from very light and bright to the rich red wine. The Amarone was that kind of um it was a it was a little kind of a fence kind of thing. It was almost sour and um Malty, but, but sour and um, very, very drying. Um, the bourbon Moscatel, true bourbon kind of maturation um, that you would kind of guess that you would have, but with a, a hint of sweetness that didn't overpower it. Um, their spirit, I think, matched well with that because with a dessert wine, you know, some of those are pretty... I mean, they're very powerfully sweet, but they're also pretty, um, I don't want to say fragile, but, but 
lighter to where a, a heavy, heavy, heavy spirit would not be able, would not reflect well within a Moscatel, I don't think. But I think this did okay. More than likely because it had that bourbon base to it. Um, but man alive. That double maturation of Sherry and Oloroso with that 40 ppm. That's money. <laughs> that was so really, really good. Oh my gosh. Yum. So Ben, you'll have to tell me which one you like. The Tio Tanek Adain. Nah. I, I, all right. I'm going to write these things out phonetically. I'm going to find a way to do that because that drives me nuts, not being able to say them right. Um, tell me what you liked between that and then that um, Single Waltz of Scotland, 18. How'd you like that one? That's for sure. Um, Ian's got a, a waft of, of, <laughs> of Pete. Yes, Pete by osmosis, right? Um, we, we learned about that in chemistry, right? In biology, rather. Yeah. Um, so you were a bit overserved. I cannot even imagine because I know our buddy did yours too. Um, not hard to do, but don't tell anybody. Yep. Hey, Whiskey Nose is in. Hey, friend, thanks for being here. We're talking about Boone Hobbin. You got to tell me which one you like the most. Um, if you ever find yourself in Isla, you must go to Boone Hobbin. Um, it is a, a must stop for sure. Um, so, yes, absolutely. So they do sell the 20 CL bottles of their single cask at the distillery. So, yeah, easy. Like, you don't have to commit 100 pounds plus for a single cask when you can buy a 20, like, buy five 20 CLs. And you've got a little menagerie of everything. And you can say you had it. That's a great point. See, this is what you get with Graham Fraser right here on Scotch on the Fly. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, um, so did I prefer the Sherry one over the other ones that I, over the Pia? So I didn't have, um, oh, do you prefer one Sherry over the other, like Olorosa over PX? I am usually an Olorosa girl, more than likely. PX goes along, a little bit goes a long way with me. Um, but it's also a mood thing, right? So, I really kind of get into a PX when I like it's Christmas time and I really want something sweet and kind of like desserty. Um, but Olorosa is usually my jam. Um, and I also want to see like how much of the PX, like I like a, like a second finishing of PX. Um, that kind of gives it some of those attributes without it being so overly done. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to turn either one of them away, but thanks for the question, Rob. That's awesome. I do, I do like that. Um, man. Hey, Mike, no worries. Thanks for being here. Um, poor, eh. Aaron's good too. <laughs> it's an island as well. Oh, I need to do something on Aaron. I've got some errands. And uh, thanks to my buddy, Kevin, I got some really cool errands that um, need to be drunk. So we may have to do that part for sure. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So there in the UK, Buna will sell casks to many of the independent bottlers there. Uh, so then you get to try the cask strength at older ages and an independent bottling. So you're, you know, I would imagine it's a little bit better on the pricing. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. You know, that's the perfect part about is like what you like is what you like. That's, that's it. Absolutely. Uh. Um, <laughs> man alive. There's a giant difference between the expert and peated. And then that, yeah, I would imagine it's easily to run away, but you know, they're different. You know, it just kind of depends on what you're probably in the mood for at that moment. But 18 years in Sherry cask, I mean, if you're into Sherry, that's going to be really hard. I would say if Gregor was on, he'd probably like try to beat you up and find you. <laughs> he wouldn't beat you up. He would try to find out where you were to grab that one for sure. Uh, you know, you know, my, our boy Gregor loves, loves a Sherry Dram. Um, he came home uh, with the two, uh, two of the 200 mil. Um, uh, no full ones. Yep. Yeah. It's funny. Isn't that funny about like, as you keep going to distilleries, 
you, especially if you know you can only bring so many bottles home and you're at the end of your trip and you're going like, how can I leave this here? How can I not take this bottle back? Because I can't get this at home. And you know that you can't get it home. Like, how? what do you do? You know what you do? You leave two, pair, two pairs of your husband's shoes and footwear in London. That's what you do. <laughs> and you make sure you bring the bottle home. <laughs> Martin didn't like those shoes anyway. So it all worked out and we made, we made our, our weight. So pff, who cares? That was great. Um, uh, you were in VT uh, a few weeks ago and they stayed at Peter Buna make it stopped. Oh my goodness. What? I can't imagine that. That'd be crazy. Mm -mm -mm. Yum, yum, yum. Um, yeah, I think it is. PX is so rich, right? So when you think about what Pedro Jimenez sherry is, it's sherry made out of dried raisins. Think how about how pungent and sweet a, a raisin is. You know, now mash it all up and make wine out of it. Um, it's and 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 let it ferment, and it's really going to get you know some some stuff to it for sure. But yeah, mm -mm -mm. wow. Yeah, you know, you got a little bit of difference there in the ABV, but man, mm, that sounds really good. Uh, yeah, super, super rich. Well, I hope y'all had fun with that. I mean, um, Goodhaven is, is an amazing, amazing place. Um, you know, they're running 24 hours a day. Uh, like again, I said, they, you know, 3.5 mil million liters of um, per year. And they're just doing some really some cool things. I, I've got one other bottle and Graham, you may have had this too. Um, Scott Monroe gave me this this summer and I've not opened it yet because, because I have a lot of bottles that are open mainly. And because I really just want to kind of hang with it for a little bit, but um, he gave me one of the Glasgow whiskey club, North star Bunahavans. And you were talking about, um, casks for other, you know, for other independent bottlers. This is one. Um, and this one is first fill Oloroso 11 years. Y'all, this is going to be a delight. <laughs> um, but again, I'm not saving it for any particular thing except to be in a mindful state to pay attention to it when I have it the first time and then be able to share it because I, it, it was, it was shared with me. Um, but that's something that we, we would never get here, you know, and Scott was so sweet to, to give that to me. Um, so we'll do more stuff about like this. We've got a couple more coming up, um, just to kind of give you an update on the channel. We're going to be doing a few more live shows and then I am going to take a break for the summer and then we'll do one a month. Um, we'll kind of figure that out. I'm hoping what we can actually do too. So Graham doesn't have to be up at 2 a.m. Is that we can do a couple from the camp in an afternoon, like a Sunday afternoon um, time that won't like if if Roy's got a, sh a lock in that we won't we won't be up against him or anything like that. But be able to be over there and let some of our folks that are over in um, other time zones be able to, to watch us during a waking hour of the day. That would be great. Um, but during the summer, um, we're going to be working on more content, um, getting better organized. We're going to be reworking the studio a little bit more. And um, so we've got some things I'm excited about. But um, if you have suggestions, things that you do want to see on the channel, um, you know, again, we've been working for, for three years now, two years on the live show. So it's a lot. <laughs> we've talked about a lot. Um, there's a lot still to talk about, but I also would love to hear from you all on what you think about it and what you like, what, what you can maybe like pass by and that type of thing. Um, so yeah, we're going to be doing that next week. Um, uh, Earth Day's coming up and I'm gonna, we're going to be talking about sustainability and, you know, there's a lot that goes into the whiskey making process and there's some distilleries more and more are, are getting up to speed because they're trying to self-govern themselves, but more and more are doing some really cool things 
um, to make sure they don't make too big of a dent in the world when they do make their whiskey. So we'll talk about some of those distilleries, have some drams from those distilleries and um, do that a lot. I think that's going to be a lot of fun um, for sure. Um, you, so you, you like quite a few, yes, you do like quite a few <laughs> that's going to have to resource the, uh, malta barleys from somewhere other than Port Allen. That is a really big deal. And that even hits with the sustainability part of it too, because right. So many of the, um, distilleries on Isla would get their maltings from Port Ellen maltings that's owned by Diageo. Well, now Port Ellen distillery is is cranked up and they're going to feed their own beast before they feed anything else and a competitor like Buna So that's, that's a really good point. How we, yeah. Hmm. I see a show coming up for that. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. That's the kind of thing I want to say y'all. Let me know what you think about that kind of stuff. Um, that would be, that would be really awesome. But yeah, so we'll be talking more about that. Um, and um, I know the D word. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've already seen what they're doing at, at Balconis, which was interesting. Um, but anyway, yeah, so next week I will be here. Antibiotics will have done their work and I'll still be feeling well. Thanks again, everybody, for the patience of, of having to cancel last week. I hate, hate having to do that. But Leanne was in no shape to be doing um, a show for sure. Thanks again, all the camp drummers for all the support, everybody else that wants to come and spend some time on a Tuesday night. And I'm going to have the last, I think of this red wine, Buna and in my best David Brody. Hello from Isla. I will see y'all next week on Scotch in the Bayou. Until then, slaunch y'all. <laughs>